of you have asked for a clearer explanation on how our Sabutio challenge works. I'm going to talk you through whilst my assistant... Assistant! Shh, ...demonstrates it for you. So, the slide is all about gliding your player into the target circle to get the highest possible score you can. In this round, you have two choices, the closer flick or the longer distance flick. You have three shots in this round, whether you go long or short, that's up to you. Taking the longer flick will get you a three point bonus. Round two is Keith's favourite, the spinning round. Ice. Each time your player makes a connection with the ball, you get five points. As with the last round, you get two distance choices, a seven inch and a 12 inch. If you go for the 12 inch choice, you get three extra bonus points. As with every round in the challenge, you get three goes. Round three is called the putt. Why is it called the putt? Because you have to get the ball down the hole. As with the sliding round, you have two choices, close and further back. You can mix and match as you wish, but only the longer distance gives you the three point bonus. And who doesn't love a little bonus? The fourth and final round is called the chip. The aim is to shoot from anywhere within the shooting line and chip the ball into the goal. Each goal is worth five points. However, if your ball so much as grazes the bar on the way in, you'll only get three. The maximum score for our challenge is an easy 87. As of September 2019, the highest score achieved by one of our guests on the Subutio challenge has been 38. That was Chris Burford. Now, what I'm going to do is take you round the challenge, discipline by discipline, taking the optimum scoring choices for each discipline. Now, obviously, this challenge is in my studio. I've had a bit of practice, so I do have an advantage. But I just want to show you what's possible. And in the interest of fairness, there'll be no edits. Okay, so you can just see what's possible with three shots in each round. Allow me to start by saying I have no intention of telling any of you lot how to flick a Subutio player. Over the years, I've hardly met two players with the same flicking style. This is more of a guide as to how to score maximum points on the Subutio challenge and to see whether or not you'll find anything interesting you can transfer across into gameplay. So let's start with the slide. Now we know the target is straight ahead. So there is no reason for us to look at the target circle at all. What we want to do is to ensure the player is propelled cleanly and straight. Now for me, I like to make a firm and comfortable bridge and my first finger is going to play the shot. So I like to be just around an inch away and what I want to do is just flick and make sure that I just follow through. <clears throat> if you apply too much power trying to cover the distance, what can happen is your player will start in a slide but then it will evolve into a curling spin. If that was a game, you might be creating fouls or getting your player a long way out of position. So the answer is not power in the propulsion, it is fluidity and to make it smooth. So from about an inch back, follow through and go. Your player will slide flat and true. So here we go for real, three unedited shots at the sliding round. Staying consistent, keeping our flick fluid and smooth. Two fives and a three, giving us 13, but we've won three bonus distant points for each shot, 
and I score of 22. For a good and reliable spinning Sabutio player, there are a few straightforward things to follow. Now, to aim to be successful in the spinning challenge, we have to see with, almost mentally, the arc required to hit the ball. If we go too narrow, the player's going to come in too early. So we want to go out nice and wide. Now, how are we going to do that? To get the player to head off left, we want to come to the right-hand side of the base. And again, I would recommend not looking at the ball. Concentrate on where your finger's going to hit the player. Now, what you want to do is to hit almost at the five o'clock area. If his base was a clock, hit the five o'clock area and your flicking motion should be slightly upward, okay? Nothing ever with flicking should be rushed or overly powerful, okay? So you want to flick slightly upward and whereas if I was hitting him uh, straight, my bridge would be right behind him because I want to flick him on the right hand five o'clock uh, part of his base and I want him to head out to the left, I've brought my bridge around, flick slightly upward, there you go. Okay, on the spin, three unedited shots, nice consistent arcs, maximum distance bonus points, and a tasty score of 24. So we know we've lined the ball up with the hole on the putting green. So we don't need to look at the putting green again. We know if we hit that ball straight and hard enough, it'll go straight into the hole. All we care about is our player making a perfectly straight connection with the ball. If he slightly veers off when we flick him, the ball will head that way, it'll head that way. Now, if we just concentrate on our connection, which means a good bridge and making sure we hit the player straight. Now, if you're someone who likes to use the side of your finger you're at slightly more risk of skewing the shot. But if you keep your finger straight and your follow through straight, you should be fine. For me, I like my finger upright. So we just line it up for a straight shot, fluid and not overly hard. And there you have it. Right, we've got a wide now. We're gonna to have to do all of this live with no edits. Um, so let's keep our fingers crossed that everything I've told you happens. So there's the hole we're aiming for. We are about 19 inches away. We've lined the ball up nice and straight. So logic dictates if we hit the ball straight and at the right speed, we can't miss. This little goalkeeper is here to act as a little defensive wall. If we hit the keeper, it'll drop in the hole. So everything depends on our nice straight flick. So we get our bridge, get our finger straight, and we want fluidity and a bit of a follow through. Here we go. And hopefully that will happen for you every time. Here with the putt, we're not looking at the putting green. We're concentrating on a straight and fluid flick. Maximum distance bonus. And once again, 24. Now, when we're chipping, a key element of chipping is power, but it's also imperative that we know where we're hitting the ball. If we hit the ball straight on and it's hard enough, the ball may lift. However, if when we hit the ball, our base is slightly dipped, we're guaranteed a chip. Now I've seen some players take their chip with the player right up against the ball, give it maximum welly. Two things happen if you do that. One is the ball may lift, but so does the player. It looks a bit ugly and it's not particularly accurate. If you bring the player back about half an inch, what you want to do when you flick the player is get your bridge solid and then you're looking to lift the player up at the bottom of the base as you go. So get your finger under his base. Now you're not gonna do it that slowly, clearly. So you want the player under the base, an inch away from the ball, making sure the player's base dips down into the base of the ball. Mm. 
3 out of 3, 5 points and 15. A total for the round, 85 out of 87. As I said at the beginning of this segment, I wouldn't dream of telling any of you how to flick a Subutio player. After all, so long as we follow the rules, we don't use our thumb to aid propulsion, we don't slide the player along the pitch before we release it, then however you flick, however you feel comfortable, is the right way to do it. It's as simple as that. The aim here was just to show you and share with you how I do it, see if any of you find that interesting. But ultimately, it was just to share some Subutio, which is, after all, why we're all here. Thanks for watching, see you soon. Key thing when taking a shot is to form a bridge, okay? Then you get down and... I went to catch you! <laughs> We're good.